Well, thank you so much, everybody. So uh, welcome, everyone, to today's presentation, which is Virtual Commissioning for Optimized Production. Uh, I'm sure uh, some of you are already familiar with this concept of virtual commissioning. It is something we've uh, already done webinars on in the past, but we're going to take uh, a bit of a different look at it here today. So virtual commissioning, you might know, it's, it's um, the process of, of using your real control logic and your real hardware configuration to drive a, a 3D digital twin. Now that can be done at different levels, as we'll see today. You can do that at the level of, you know, detecting mechanical interferences in your robot programs when they inter are turned on and off. You can do that at a higher level with material handling and conveying systems in terms of optimizing your controls for throughput, energy consumption, things like that. That second one is the one we're going to be focusing on today, is a bit of that higher level virtual commissioning uh, to, to show you some of the benefits associated with that. So a little quick uh, agenda for today. So we're going to go into the introduction, then take a look at the virtual commissioning. From there, we're going to go into a live demo. We're going to spend a lot of our time today in the live demo section, so hoping that uh, you can ask questions as we go through that and uh, just really get a feel for the workflow here and, and how it all works. A little bit about uh, the people presenting here today. So you got myself with, uh, with an outdated photo there. Um, I'm the Director of Marketing and Sales at Long-Term Technology Services. I'm joined here today by my colleagues, uh, Tungwen and Camel, who will be walking us through the live demo portion of the presentation. A little bit about us before we get started. We are Long-Term Technology Services. We are a, a Siemens certified uh, smart partner and technology partner. Uh, what that basically means is that we are certified experts on the solutions and approaches we're showing you today. Technology partner means that we also do our own in-house uh, in software development. Uh, so when we have customers who have uh, unique uh, use cases or, or need something built, uh, we can also do that for them as well. We have a lot of experience in operations, simulation, validation, uh, optimization, and virtual commissioning, as we will talk about here today. And another thing that I think is very important to mention um, and that really distinguishes us from uh, other folks out there who are uh, licensing and selling things like uh, Siemens Technomatics, uh, we offer full holistic support on this. And I believe that there is no one else in North America who really matches our level of support on Technomatics from the licensing and implementation to uh, user uh, instructor-led training, uh, on-demand user support, call us up, you're working on a live project, anything that you're doing with Technomatics, uh, we, can, we can work with you on that and help you through it. So it's really that wraparound end-to-end -end support that we offer on this product. So a quick introduction into digital twinning solutions just to give you an idea of, uh, of where uh, the solution is coming from on this today. So today we are specifically talking about a product called Siemens uh, Technomatics Plant Simulation. Uh, some of you are probably familiar with Process Simulate. We're talking about plant simulation today and we'll give you a bit of an idea of why that is the case. So a lot of trends that are driving uh, what we're seeing here is uh, consumer-driven customization, a lot of smart machines, the hyper-automation, especially uh, in the days of, of COVID, and uh, new global competition, new business models are really uh, impacting companies by in introducing a lot more complexity into their projects, uh, more demands on security. Uh, people basically just want uh, better, more complicated things on shorter timelines and at cheaper cost. There's just a lot of uh, pressure on the companies to deliver on all those different areas. So part of the vision here is this notion of the digital product, which you are creating uh, in, in the digital world. So in this case, we, we would be talking about your, uh, your digital production system. Then you're implementing that, let's say, uh, let's call this real-world commissioning. And then after your real-world commissioning, you're talking about digital performance, where you're taking the uh, outputs, that the data being output from the system that you have actually set up, and you are then feeding that back into your digital twin so that you can... Uh, have that as a single closed loop. So the insights from performance are coming back from the real system, and then you're using that digital twin on an ongoing business, uh, basis to continuously improve. And as we'll, we'll talk about today, that includes things like optimizing and debugging uh, your control logic using, using the, uh, the digital twin. So Siemens uh, simulation works at a lot of different levels, so I'll give you a quick idea here of what we're talking about today. So today we're going to be talking about uh, the level of the production line, the factory, and the, uh, the basically the material handling system. So that's what you call plant level situ simulation. If you go another layer down, this is where you're getting more into things like robot cells, interferences uh, between robots, and that sort of thing. And then uh, as you as you move down production machine, that's more like uh, an individual. Let's let's say like a bottling machine, 
you're simulating that and all of the uh, the physics associated with it. And then as you get down here, all the way down to automation where you're simulating your uh, your PLC and your HMI. So for the purposes of today's presentation, we're really going to be focusing on these two levels and the connection between them. So a little bit about uh, Technomatics plant simulation, so a little bit of background on the solution that we're going to be looking at today. So why why do people use this particular particular product? So they're trying to increase flexibility in how they're arranging their production systems. They're trying to reduce their throughput time, reduce capital expenditures. So basically what's happening there is if you simulate something first, uh, you can determine the, the throughput and the ROI you're going to get from it before you actually commit to building it. Uh, reducing your overall footprint, so that's both the environmental footprint in terms of control strategies and turning machines on and off more efficiently, but also your physical footprint. How can you do uh, more with less in a very specific amount of space that you've been provided within the facility? You're trying to re reduce WIP uh, by optimizing your control strategies, uh, trying to detect those process interdependencies, especially if you've got a complex material handling system with a lot of entry and exit points, uh, making those data-driven decisions uh, based on uh, your simulations, optimizing your control strategies against the digital twin, making sure that they are fully optimized before you go ahead and build that real system, and then doing that with virtual commissioning and uh, uh, industrial Internet of Things playback. So that's where you're taking the data from the system that you've built, and you're continuing to feed that back into the digital twin that you used to build it. Uh, just a couple of examples here of, of the way that people have used this. So people cutting inventory in half, uh, increasing production throughput by about 40%, reducing production costs by about 30%, uh, reducing cycle times, uh, logistics costs, that sort of thing is what you're getting uh, from the people who are using this, uh, this tool. So to get into virtual commissioning as we are looking at it today, so why are we talking about virtual commissioning at all? Why are people even bothering to, uh, to test all of their control logic and, and drive uh, the simulated system in a virtual environment rather than just waiting until you get to the real shop floor and debugging against the real system? So here are some of the uh, reasons that people are doing this. So the efforts for real commissioning are, are difficult to calculate ahead of time until you really get everything set up and start debugging. Uh, real hardware is necessary for testing with physical commissioning and with lead times nowadays. Uh, and, and the global supply chain, it, in many cases, companies, you know, to fulfill their timelines, they, they need the work to continue, even if the hardware has not arrived. And that's why they have to continue that work using a digital version. Um, there's limited error analysis on the real system, uh, unclear requirements from the customer. So the customer might not spell everything out for you until the system is actually set up. And then they say, oh, well, that's, that's not what I imagined at all. Why didn't you, uh, you know, do it like it was on the napkin? Um, the, uh, the automation system adaptable at a later stage. Um, often, you know, you're testing and debugging these systems under extreme time pressure. It'd be nice to relieve that pressure by uh, allowing your, you, your team to test it virtually and uh, debug and optimize everything there before uh, deploying the physical system. And then there can just be misunderstanding uh, between some of the disciplines, between mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, uh, automation engineers, and, and all that type of stuff. So. Here are some typical key questions that automation engineers are bringing to the table when we're talking about something like virtual commissioning. So how do you increase your engineering and operational efficiency? Uh, how do you raise your quality while cutting costs? How do you shorten your uh, physical commissioning time uh, and enhance the plant productivity? So how do you uh, shorten commissioning times uh, at the physical stage because there's such a premium on that time, uh, especially when you're on site and you need that to go um, basically as perfectly as possible? How do you ensure that, uh, that you're reducing any risks during actual commissioning? Because if you turn on a system that hasn't been uh, fully optimized or debugged, bad things can happen when you turn on that physical system, and bad things can happen from a cost perspective, from a safety perspective, and from a re reputational perspective. And then finally, how do you train your plant operators effectively? This is a really interesting one. So once you have a system set up in the 3D world and you have somebody driving that system using the real hardware configuration and the real control logic, you can actually have an operator begin training on the virtual system prior to the physical system uh, becoming available. So this is where we get to the solution of te testing and optimizing your real hardware configuration and control logic in a completely virtual environment. And we're going to spend as much time as possible today kind of getting into the software and looking through that and showing you the workflows just to give you an idea of how that is done. 
Here's a little bit of a sense of how virtual commissioning works kind of more from a system architecture perspective. So in the real world, right, you would have your hardware controller, for example, you would have your production system, and you would have those two working together. Uh, with virtual commissioning, you have options, right? There, there's uh, something called uh, hardware in the loop and software in the loop of virtual commissioning. Hardware in the loop virtual commissioning is when you're taking your real hardware and you are running it into the simulation computer, like let's say with an Ethernet cable and you're using the real hardware to drive that system. Software in the loop virtual commissioning is when you are using an emulated uh, PLC HMI hardware to, uh, to just basically, there's, there's a lot of convenience associated with that, right? If you don't want to uh, set up all of your hardware at a desk, you can emulate your hardware uh, using uh, Siemens PLC Sim Advanced and then running it that way. So this is how the two look together. And, uh, and the support within this software is for basically whatever hardware you, you bring to the table, uh, you just let us know, like, it, you know, this is not a, this is not a Siemens specific thing. Uh, it, it's, it's open to all these different uh, types of hardware and, and whatever your needs might be. I'm going to stop at this point, actually, just for some, uh, just to, just to take a breather and ask for some questions. Does anybody have any questions about what you've seen so far? Everyone good? Okay. See the next step. So we're getting now into this idea of connecting plant simulation with the PLC. So validating, uh, so these are some of the uh, benefits you're going to see, right? So you're validating your overall material flow and your control logic. Uh, you're verifying your PLC code and your HMI. Uh, you're verifying the conveying unit and the head unit level and you're performing all your system diagnostic testing. And the key points here, right, is that you can also uh, perform what-if scenarios. You can run the system through different failure modes. Uh, you're like, as I mentioned earlier, you're validating prior to the, uh, the construction of the system. Uh, you can perform operator training uh, against, against that digital twin, and you can uh, connect to PLC, SIM Advanced, uh, TIA portal, and more to, uh, to really expand outward, right? So that's with the, um, with the uh, emulation of your, of your hardware, if that's what you're looking for. So extending the value of your digital twin. So going back to the benefits here. So in this, in, in column number one here, let's say you've got the virtual commissioning of transport systems, right? So in this example, people are using it to look at, say, your AGV master control, your conveying systems, skilled systems, electric monorail systems, testing out those types of things. On another level, you've got virtual commissioning for line integration. So you're integrating different machines into a system with a head level PLC, and you're implementing your, uh, your um, machine interface standardization. And then from there, those, these are more kind of on the virtual commissioning level, but the software takes a, a step beyond that, right, where um, you're actually constructing a digital twin within the system to optimize all of your production and logistics and system design, even beyond the, the, the control level, but the actual design of the system itself. So, you know, your sensor positioning, uh, your performance and your routing for your material flow, uh, you know, planning reliability, uh, any evaluation of different process alternatives. So that could be something like uh, the layout. Of a uh, of a conveyor system, for example. So so at that level, at the level of pr production efficiency, you can do that in tandem with the uh, with the testing and and uh, debugging of your control logic. So in a typical situation here, you have a production engineer who might be asking questions like, you know, how many robots do I use for this system? Uh, do, should I go with AGVs or a conveyor? What is the throughput going to be? That same person doing that work can use this same tool as the automation engineer who might have a completely different set of questions, right? Because they're going to say, which signals do I need? Is my code correct? Are all the production variants fully tested and debugged? Now, these two people in real life would be collaborating to a large extent, but they do have different areas that they work on and both can do this collaboratively within the same software. So the idea here is that you can view the behavior of the whole thing in 3D. The automation engineer uh, and uh, the people putting together the uh, controls uh, can get involved very early with the production engineer, right? They, and, and we'll show you in a moment how early this can happen. But they can start virtually commissioning a system basically as soon as a production engineer can throw it together uh, in the digital world. And then, uh, again, you can also train people on that, on that uh, virtual system before the physical system becomes available.
So the idea here is that you're putting your simulation and your engineering teams in parallel, whereas uh, traditionally this might be somewhat staggered, right? You might have certain teams working on, uh, you might have certain teams waiting on other teams for certain things to be completed before you can move forward. But with this, those people can work a lot more collaboratively. And while they're doing that, you can really increase the quality of the engineering, right? Because you're, because you're, you're validating so much of it on the virtual system prior to setting up the real one. And that, of course, is going to lead to shorter physical commissioning times and reduced rework, which all reflects well with the customer and inspires more confidence. You can also show these things to the customer very, very early uh, in the project lifecycle, right? At the sales stage, um, at any point, right, where you want to show them a simulated system that is being driven by a real hardware configuration and real control logic, that inspires a lot of confidence in customers who would traditionally be waiting until that system is set up on their shop floor to really get satisfaction on how fully validated it is. So the benefits that come from this are up to 80% savings on that uh, commissioning time in the real world, significantly reducing the risk for errors and accidents once the system is turned on, and a lot of cost savings as a result. And of course, for, for your customers, for like let's say the OEM or the end customer, uh, it just provides a lot of reassurance on how ready a system is for on-site commissioning prior to it arriving. This is why you are seeing this as an increasing um, requirement in a lot of, uh, in a lot of uh, OEM procurement at the moment. And that has really accelerated since COVID started. So another big thing, right, is this is often used for plant modernizations. So if you're taking an existing infrastructure that many of these companies, many of these uh, tier ones and OEMs already have the digital twin built. So if they want to modernize or just um, rearrange things or even um, reprogram an existing line, they can very easily do that with the digital twin that is already set up. And before we get to our demo, just a couple of success stories that might be relevant to the folks here. So the first one is Mechtop. Mechtop is a company that really uh, has made its bones in uh, complex conveyor systems and material handling systems. And so they turned to uh, Technomatics plant simulation to, to really make a, a lot of early stage design decisions and to verify their project feasibility um, as early as the sales process for complex conveyor systems. Because when you have these very complicated conveyor systems, you have a very specific uh, footprint in the facility that you can work with. You've got a lot of entry and exit points and a lot of variance within that with a lot of control logic behind it. Uh, you want uh, the person, you know, you, you want somebody to be able to really drive all of that using the real control logic and, uh, and hardware configuration before you go forward. So as a result, uh, they, they started using this to create the digital twin to validate, uh, first of all, the plant capacity to actually fit in. You can see here actually in this, in this example, right, the, the capacity to, to really fit in that conveying system within the existing footprint. And then uh, them taking, uh, using it to optimize their control strategies for that, for that complicated system. And then for, uh, within 60 days, they were getting from a design to a complex simulation. As a result, they uh, using this earlier in the cycle, like the sales phase, uh, they're able to increase their deal size and win rate because you're just inspiring a lot of confidence in the customer. And uh, you're also able to compete with, let's say, potentially uh, bigger name companies, right? Um, because you're, you're offering something very tangible to, to the customer. And when you add, uh, you know, virtual commissioning uh, to that simulation, you're making it even more tangible. And then in this case, uh, right off the bat, they uh, using the software right off the bat, they secured a $3 million contract using the digital twin uh, for to sell that uh, that conveyor system. This is a much this is a much different example. This is an actual major automotive OEM um, that 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 had uh, basically had a failed production changeover to a new product line, and they had a very small uh, window to make that changeover happen after after that failure had occurred, and they had a deadline that they were working with, so they didn't really have uh, much choice here. As a result, they went with uh, the Siemens TIA portal and PLC in advance. They would be using that to, uh, to emulate their, uh, their hardware. And then uh, Technomatics plant simulation, and they are using that to perform the virtual commissioning of the changeover um, prior to doing it in production. And so they, that's significant reduced risk because they're fully debugging everything prior to implementing it in the real system uh, as much as nine times faster on their product changeover and then the day one uh, production cost savings about uh, 300,000 uh, euros. 
Another company here is the uh, the Lion Builder Ingenia. So they reduced their uh, you know on-site commissioning times by about 75%. Uh, they reduced the times from two months to two weeks um, with much higher quality on those deliverables. Uh, they were able to perform those what-if scenario tests uh, on uh, before the PLC code is used on site, and uh, they were able to uh, write more sophisticated PLC code as as uh, as a re as the result because they were able to be a bit bolder because there's no risk in testing that on a virtual system. And then finally, you have uh, Grasenbach, which is a machine builder saving 15 weeks per project in commissioning time by testing their PLC code against Technomatics plant simulation. So we have the uh, the demo coming up here, which I will turn over to uh, Camel and Tungwin, but I will pause again for any questions. Any questions? Okay, then I will turn it over to you, uh, Camel and Tungwin. Thank you, Phil. I think uh, we're going to go into the live demo session. I think in this session, we're going to show three different uh, demo uh, covering different aspects of using plot simulation in the virtual commissioning world. The first demo we're going to show you is a pretty complex, you know, uh, middle-sized project connecting with external PLC, and we find a, a problem in the production line, and we optimize it. I think I'm going to turn over to Camel to show this case. Oh. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Camel Ha from uh, Long Term Tech. I will be doing up to three demos to you to show you the connection between uh, plant simulation and external PLC. So the first demo is about a canned coffee factory. I'm going to show you that we can drive the model with PLC just like what we do in the real world. The model is like this. So we have coffee cans unpacked with plates and we have two flavors. So they will be filled in different lines on the uh, two production lines. And some of the cans will go directly to the packing machine for single flavored packs, while others will meet in the middle area where a robot will pick two to four of each flavor to an assorted pack. After the cans are picked, the plates will be recycled. Okay, and now let's focus on one of the assorted pack lines. Since the length of the line is limited, we will need to block the line when the number of cans exceeds a limit. Plus, since the robot picked the can in a group of two to four, we need to start and stop the line based on the number of cans processed. And now we have already written the PLC code, the PLC logic and the code, and we already connected with the PLC SIM advanced, providing a Siemens as well. So we can try to see if our logic is correct or not. And also, we also have a web-based HMI to show the status of the of the uh, of the model. That so will make them side by side. We will start to run the simulation. Uh, before that, I would just try to deactivate and activate the connection again to make sure that our connection is up to date. We we'll run the simulation. We, are, we, can, we can focus on this line. So it is here. I will open the line here as well. You can see we have the robot to pick the cans to the assorted uh, box. And in the web-based HMI, we can see the speed of the conveyor and number of products that is uh, being processed. And now it is stopped. We 
found that those um, plates are not recycled as, uh, uh, as well as we expected. So the line gets stuck and we may need to go back to our code and see what's going on. So by doing the virtual commissioning, we are, we are able to find the problem that we, uh, that we have in our PLC. So we go back to our PLC and in the end, we actually found that the problem is, uh, is from one line of the code. So I will update the code to a fixed one. And I will download to the PLC to update the code. So after we fixed the issue, we can try if we if we actually fixed it or not. I will inactivate and activate again to update the connection. You can run the simulation again. Focus this line. Now we can see it also shows the um, incoming and outcoming signals as well. So we can see the three cans are picked. Another two cans are picked and the plates are processed as what we expected. So here we can confirm that we fixed the, the issue. And by doing this virtual commissioning, we don't need to go to the real production line. We just need to uh, simulate this in the plant simulation and it works just like what we do in the real world. So by doing this, it saves you a lot of time to actually do the debugging and um, and update the code. Okay. So that concludes uh, the first demo. Very good. Does, does anybody have any questions about what you just saw? All good on the uh, <laughs> the virtual commissioning as as a way of uh, uh, finding errors and debugging. Okay, very good. I think with that, oh, thumbs up from Daryl. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, with that, uh, Camel, you can uh, move on to the next example. Sure. So the next example, I will use another uh, PLC. So as you can see, we can have multiple PLC prepared in the uh, PLC sim in advance. So, okay, I just need to actually, I need to go back and I need to change the mode to the PLC sim mode. Turn the other PLC on. Second demo is to show you that we can uh, that how easily we can create a project in plan simulation and connect it to the external PLC. So we can deploy the virtual commissioning very quickly. So let's see this model, which contains three conveyors, conveyor A, conveyor B, and conveyor C. And each of them has each has its own control logic. So we have the part coming from one station they will be allocated to the three uh, conveyors and then to other three stations. And for the conveyors, just like what we do before, due to the length of the conveyor and our control logic and our uh, production plan, uh, we have different control logics for the three conveyors. And it's like this. So I want to control if the conveyor is failed or not. So that means so that I can control the on and off of the conveyor. Also, for conveyor A, when the number of uh, uh, product 
is larger than five, I want to block the entrance of it. And after the parts are are uh, processed, when the number is done, when the number of parts on conveyor A is down to two or smaller than three, I want to reopen the uh, conveyor. For conveyor B, it is more kind of simpler. When the number of parts is larger than three, I will block it. And for C, when the number of products is larger than six, I will block it. Okay, so I will also make this side by side. And to show you uh, this, this, this is the other, uh, to show you the control of this one. So I will just uh, activate and I will run the simulation. So everyone, so all three conveyors are blocked at the beginning. I can start a HMI, which is the controller of these three conveyors. I can turn conveyor A on, B, and conveyor C. As you can see, I can control it with the virtual, uh, with the HMI as well, to control the simulation. And you can see when the number of parts on A is larger than five, it is blocked. It's continuing the processing. When the number of parts on A is down to two, it will be reopened. And I can stop conveyor B or stop conveyor A as I wish. So I will also show you how we can create this one in a few minutes. So I can inactive this one. I will create a new model. It's 3D. So I can create this uh, I can create this model with everything provided from the uh, existing plant simulation library. So I can simply drag and drop the items station and a starting conveyor. I can drag another three conveyors, conveyor A, conveyor B, and conveyor C. I will connect them, connect with the first conveyor. Let's drag them to the place and they will be connected automatically. I will have another three stations to end the part. Let's drag and drop. I will rename the conveyors to layer A, layer B, and B. And another thing I want to do is to show the status of the conveyor. So I can edit 3D properties. And there are a lot of settings provided by uh, plant simulation. And I will be doing the uh, states to show. So I'll apply here. I want to show if the conveyor is in is working or not, and if it's blocked or not. I want to make it bigger so we can see it better and placement of the stasis bar a little bit on the side. I will do the same thing to the conveyor B and C.
minus two on the y side and uh, probably three on x. Here C. Vertical bar. Zero. Y at minus four probably. Four. Seven. Okay. So we have three status bars as well. And now I'm going to create the connection between the, uh, our model and the PLC. This one I will use the PLC uh, scene advanced module here. So the instance name is the one that we do in the uh, PLC scene advanced, that is PLS 11251. Okay, so that's PLS 11251. Right, I will activate. So after just one sec, it is connected. Then I can import items, and that is the key of this feature. Because by doing this, we will be able to connect the signals in our PLC to the virtual world, to our attributes in our simulation or the, our virtual world. So one of the PLC input will be the number of MUs in the, on the conveyor. That will be number of MU. MU is the part, so this is the number of parts on the conveyor. I want to connect this attribute to our PLC as a, as a PLC input. And for the output, I want to control the conveyors with the PLC. So I want to make the controller fail when the PLC tells it to fail. So the output, one of the output will be the conveyor fail. Also, from our logic, when the number of parts is two, it is excess of the limit, I want it to entrance lock. So this is also from our logic. And I can simply set up the connection like this. And you may need to manually input the uh, connections uh, or the simulation model attributes. But also, you can simply import and export. So it can make your job easier if you want to try the same logic or the same PLC on another setup or on another model. And this will be very simple. Just the import, just export and import the signals. I can OK that. Click OK. And the scenes are connected. I can run the simulation. I will also put the simulation uh, side by side. As you can see, I just created this demo in a few minutes, and I will also try to uh, turn on the HMI. I'll also go online and to uh, just to let you see that we can check the status of our signals as well. You can see the numbers of parts will be updated in our PLC, so the connection is good. And when we turn the conveyors on and off, it will also show in the uh, in the TIA portal. Thus, we can control our uh, logic. So here I just showed that we can create and establish this uh, plan simulation to PLC connection easily. And that concludes the second demo.
Yeah, thank you very much for that, Camel. So just to quickly recap, so now we've gone through two examples, right? The first was a fairly kind of like mature uh, built up system, right, where we were debugging. We were using the, the software to um, find uh, issues with the control logic and to uh, debug on the fly. This example was more about just the ease of use in terms of setting something up from scratch, right? So we saw Camel uh, create a system from scratch and then connect it to the, uh, to the PLC HMI. Um, especially at that level of, of material flow, conveying systems, material handling systems, uh, this is a very straightforward software. It is not complicated when it comes to, you know, creating a system like this and then setting it up for virtual commissioning. Uh, before we go to our final, our final example is going to be actually um, not just creating from scratch and not just debugging control logic, but optimizing the system itself using, using this software. But before we do that, do we have any questions about this example? We good? See a floating thumbs up. Good. Yep. Uh, okay. Question from from Jan. Yep. Are you able to unmute yourself, Jan? Or yep. No worries. Hey guys, can you hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. All yes. good. Um, just a question on your PLC SIM software. Let's say we're using, so I'm assuming you guys are using some sort of Siemens um, environment for your PLC. Um, and I saw that you do have the capabilities of like, of uh, communicating with uh, other environments. For example, we use Omron, the Omron um, SysMac environment. What kind of, uh, I guess, simulation environment, like, would, are you able to fully take in the program and have that be inside PLC Sim, or do you need some sort of um, uh, middleman between the the two the the two environments? Okay, yeah. so I can take that question. So basically, Jan, in this case. It's really you're gonna use the Omron simulator, right? So to simulate the Omron PLC, or you can use a real, you know, physical Omron PLC to connect it to the uh, plant simulation model. So that's how uh, you do that. Like the PLC sim advance, as uh, we are showing you in this demo, is really uh, for Siemens PLC. So, uh, so okay. basically, different brands of PLC has different their own simulators uh, that can be used in this case. So you're able to collect tag information, everything, while I'm running okay. yeah. it in my environment? Yes. Because so, I, I haven't, sh yeah, okay. So, so yeah, how this works, right? So um, as there is a pretty common uh, a communication protocol called OPC UA or OPC UA, uh, OPC UA and OPC DA. So what you do is just, uh, uh, connected through this uh, protocol uh, with with all kinds of PLC, and then you can communicate it uh, with the uh, plant simulation software. So okay, yeah, I, yes. I've seen that. I uh, haven't yeah. uh, played around with that area yet, but uh, that's good to know. Yeah, perfect. Okay, that's my question. Thanks, Jen. No problem. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks. Any other uh, questions before uh, our our third uh, example? good okay 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 and at, at any time if anybody ever wants to put any questions into the chat or um or just raise hand uh you can you can do so at any time while while the presentation is going on yep and uh, okay so camel you can move to the third example here so now sure. we're talking about so we've we've used it to identify controls issues and debug we've done it from scratch and now we're going to do it to optimize or improve, improve a system's design? Sure. So the third demo will be focused on a, more, uh, on a higher level. That is, when we already have the model and the PLC SIM connection and the PLC connection established, how plan simulation will help you make better these business decisions. 
So we have, for example, a sample painting, uh, painting cell here, where the parts will be painted in two colors. Say, however, there is a chance that the painting may not meet the quality requirements, and those parts after checking process, we have the two checking process here. After the checking process, some of them will be sent to the manual painting stations to finish by a manual process. So let's consider this type of uh, application and this type of uh, a production line. And we do have different um, setups. Say we can, uh, we can um, decide how many manual machines to turn on and what is the quality level that we want to check. If we set higher quality levels so that the parts can generate higher revenue, then however, this will increase the possibility that the parts fail in the checking process. So that will require more manual machines to turn on. And if we turn on more manual machines, so we can handle more parts in the manual process, however, this will increase the power consumption. And because, because the machine will consume energy, no matter if it's processing or not processing the part. So here we have, we need to find a balance point because the more, the, the higher quality level we, we have, we can generate more revenue, but it will require more manual machines to turn on. However, if we have more machines to turn on, it will, gen it will cost us more energy and uh, the energy cost will increase. So here we need to find a balance point. We want to generate higher quality level parts, well, less manual machines to turn on, and so that we can maximize our profit. So interestingly, based on the variable, based on the available workers number, we can actually may have different balance points. And that is what we can do with plant simulation, that it can help you automatically, automatically find the Automa uh, find the optimized um, kind of uh, parameter combination of your production line. So for example, let's say I have uh, two workers and I have a tool here to help me do the experiments. So we have two parameters, the number of manual machines and the quality level. And I just test each of them from one to five, that will generate 25 experiments. And I can just uh, do the experiment. So roughly one second per, uh, per experiment. And this will tell us what is the uh, best combination of these two parameters if, when we have two workers. Give me a report in the end. And we can see for all the experiments, it has different profit as the output. And in the end, we found that to maximize our profit, it is best that we turn on two manual machines and we set the quality level to two. Well, the thing is, when we have different uh, number of workers available, for example, you're having a different shift in certain days, and you may want to change the parameters, and you want to find what is the best uh, combination of these uh, of the of these parameters in this situation. So we can run this tool to tell you to automatically um, figure out what is the best combination of these uh, parameters. So when we when we have four workers, and we will find that. From in the from the report, we can find that. Okay, let's see. When we have four machines to be turned on with quality level of five, that will be the best case. Uh, that will be the optimized parameters in your case, in this situation. So now we can what we can do is to turn on the PLC and see. Okay, I want to active the PLC connection. And I also turn on this PLC mode since I do have some other uh, external code. And I will run the simulation. 
beginning, uh, the initial number is zero, I will turn on the make the other screen as the dot screen and this connection this uh, uh, this control logic is in the other uh, is in the other network I will start the simulation of this uh, HMI so I can change the numbers of manual machines to turn on the or to turn on four machines so we can control the number here we want to set the quality level to five and the quality level is set up then we can run the simulation and it will take a long longer time to run because uh, our our experiment did for a one day simulation. So it's very fast. And in the end, you will see how your um, profit and uh, how, how, how your simulation will run and how your production line will be like if you set your numbers in, in this way. So this one shows that after you already have the connections set up and your model ready, you will be able to have, the plan simulation will provide you with a bunch of tools that can help you make better business decisions. Okay, and that concludes um, all the demos. Uh, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you, Camel. Uh, any questions about uh, this example that you see now or anything actually that you've seen during this presentation? Uh, the, the timing, uh, we're very well timed, uh, Camel and Tengwen, because we're about uh, five or six minutes remaining. So uh, with that, uh, we can uh, move it into our uh, question period. But uh, I'll, I'll, let, uh, the, I'll let you keep control of the, the um, screen there, Camel, just in just in case people have any questions related to the uh, the UI specifically. Any any questions about uh, what we've discussed here today? I don't really have a question. It's uh, Daryl King's Autotube. Um, not a question, I just comment. It's, it, this is really good stuff, and this is something I would really like to see <laughs> in our toolbox here. I, I'm pushing for it. I know Jan is too. I am. Um, Definitely good stuff. Uh, I appreciate this demo. I'm afraid I'm going to have to sign off now because I've got an 11 o'clock meeting that I absolutely cannot be late for. But uh, thanks again. Well, we really appreciate your time, Daryl, and, and Jan as well. Yeah. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you. Very good. Any other uh, questions? So just to quickly recap what we've seen here today, we've seen uh, Camel and Tomo, we've, we've seen them uh, set up a system from scratch and uh, connect it to the, uh, the PLC HMI. We've seen uh, the system used to uh, identify an issue with, with control logic and then, and then debug on the fly. And then finally, we've seen it used to optimize the system um, for parameters like efficiency and, and even profitability in terms of the, there, there's a lot of information that you can enter into this system to uh, to run these simulations and really and really optimize your overall design, um, especially when it comes to like material handling and, and conveying, which we're seeing an increasing uh, demand for virtual commissioning in this realm, as I mentioned before, especially from the from the OEMs. Who, if if you look at your screen right now, like they they want to receive this kind of file and they want somebody in house driving that system. With, with the real with the real hardware whether it's whether it's physical or emulated they they want to be able to run through all of that themselves prior to letting a company on site for factory acceptance testing and it's even it's it's already been called it's been dubbed virtual factory acceptance testing and it's and it's becoming much much more common yeah I was wondering if you guys are seeing this <laughs> being used as a digital twin 
post um, post go live in any capacity. You mean like sort of like the like like pulling the data from the real system back into the Visual Twin as a sort of diagnostic real time tool? Perhaps, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that that yeah. yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Tim. Yeah, we did, uh, Ben. Uh, so that's we see a customer using this in this way, actually. So so they they kind of uh, see what's going on, or right? pulling the real time data from the shop floor and 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 see you know and diagnose or, and see what's going on on the in the digital twin. So this is also possible. So course. sort of like a, they're using it sort of like a more in depth HMI with that has the three D element to it. I guess is that right? Yes. 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 Yeah. Sort of, yes. Yeah. Okay. And the and another thing that they're doing with that, Ben, is like as they as they pull more and more like um historical production data in, right? Um that like plant simulation can then work with that in, in a probabilistic way as far as production goes, right? So it can okay. start it can it can start to generate much more accurate clouds of probability in terms of potential changes to demand, you know, changes to production. It can simulate up to a year of production. And as that gets fed with more and more of the real historical data, right, it just it grows in accuracy over time. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because we've been doing the virtual commissioning for like 15 years, but this kind of thing is where I'm trying to understand where where the use cases are as far as digital twins post go live. So thanks. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank you. And that's and that's being like basically the the terminology for that is is the closed loop digital twin is what that's being called right now, is when is when the the IIoT the IIoT data is coming back into, the the digital twin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a great question. Uh, any 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 other questions? Got uh, ten fifty nine. We did great for time today. So. Um, Going once, going twice. Okay. With that, I would like to thank everybody very much for coming today. Just going to share some quick uh, contact info if uh, you guys, can, if you can all see that. But uh, absolutely, uh, thank you all for coming today. Uh, we're very, we're very happy to be able to present this to you and and sort of the uh, what's going on in the realm right now and the vision for it going forward. If if any of you have any questions. Uh, following up on this, please don't hesitate to let me know. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we we have very we have a very very deep bench on technomatics and virtual commissioning. So if if there's anywhere where you need um, you know further exploration of these tools or even support on your current use cases, uh, please do not uh, hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we we live and breathe uh, virtual commissioning and uh, technomatics. So thank you all for coming here today and uh, have yourselves a great rest of your day. Thank you.